Hello viewers, welcome back for my review of the second season of Yume Iro Patissiere. Season 2 begins with our characters returning to Japan after studying abroad in France for two years. I was kind of disappointed they skipped over that, to be honest, but I guess it wouldn't really have fit with the rest of this season. While our characters are still in high school, technically, there's very little studying going on these days. Season 2 had a bit of a different feel to it, but I'm like 30 seconds in and already getting ahead of myself. This review should be fairly free of spoilers. There is another competition of sorts, but the ending didn't have a huge impact on my overall thoughts and opinions, so you don't have to worry about that. So yes, the season starts with Team Ichigo returning to Japan, and immediately disbanding as Hanabusa and Ando go off on their own to follow their specific dreams, and even Kashino is moved out of her class, allowed to skip a grade for always having such high marks. But Ichigo doesn't have long to wallow over this before she's contacted by Onri sensei His letter leads Ichigo, Kashino, and two of her new classmates to an empty shop in what seems to be an empty town. Here, Henri announces that this place is his new project, Marie's Garden. Once this place is open, it'll be all bakeries and sweets shops, with flavors from all around the world. Each one is run by someone Henri personally scouted, and he tells these four that he wants them in charge of all the shops on the main street once it opens. Furthermore, there's a strict, continuous competition in place. At the end of each month, the shop with the lowest sales will be shut down and given to someone else. A rule so harsh that it tests the bounds of believability, I felt. I'm no business mogul, but you need time to build up a customer base. A month is nothing. So Ichigo's got her work cut out for her, and she's not exactly working with the dream team she had last season. In addition to Kashino, she's sharing this project with Johnny, an American transfer student who immediately butts heads with Kashino, and a younger girl named Lemon. Johnny was an okay addition to the series. He's very energetic, he could be fun to watch, but despite how outgoing and friendly he seems, he's a little arrogant and struggles to work as part of a team. One of the things they argue about early on is that he sees no problem relying on money from a wealthier family member to achieve his extravagant dreams. There's a nice little background plot of Johnny learning to appreciate how good it feels to succeed just from your own hard work the longer he spends with his new friends. Honestly, the only reason I found his character kind of annoying is because it really feels like they only included him to try and shove in a love triangle. I know I mentioned I was relieved they hadn't done exactly that with any of the main characters in the first season, and it is pretty obvious by the end of season one that Ichigo's going to get together with Kashino eventually, but they're both really reserved about it, and Kashino's particularly awkward when it comes to anything involving romance, so I guess I can see why they may have felt the need to introduce someone who would push him out of his comfort zone and force him to do something about it. Actually, Johnny's not even the first flamboyant foreigner to have taken an interest in Ichigo. He's just the only one to have been awarded main character status. I've made it no secret that I'm not generally a fan of love triangles, so feel free to take my opinion with a grain of salt. But in addition to just not wanting to see it, I have to say, Yume Iro Patissiere's attempt at it wasn't even one of the good ones. Because it's so obvious they'll be pairing her with Kashino, it was impossible to take Johnny seriously as a romantic rival, and his desire to do everything on his own, in such contrast to Ichigo's tendency to go out of her way to help even total strangers, made it so that they never even felt particularly close as friends. It's a pointless love triangle. I would have preferred if they just focused more on his growth as a character instead. And then there's Lemon, who was actually introduced back in Season 1. She was one of the early competitors, and she used to be a little devious. Not outright cheating, but pretending to be friendly to get Ichigo to drop her guard, convincing her to use an ingredient Ichigo was unfamiliar with so Lemon would have an edge in their one-on-one -on -one battle. 
Her team ended up losing anyway, of course, and one of Ichigo's greatest strengths is forgiveness. So Lemon learns some life lessons, goes on her way, and when she reappears later in the season, she's taken on the role of the starry-eyed underclassman who now really looks up to Ichigo. Which was fine. I liked her well enough back in season one. But if I'd had to pick a minor character to bring back and promote for season two, I've gotta be honest, I don't think Lemon would have been my third choice, even. I really would have liked to see Rumi get some more love, for instance. Ichigo's roommate is immediately friendly and supportive from the moment we meet her, but she doesn't really get to do anything but stand on the sidelines and cheer on Ichigo. She was in C Group back in Season 1. You know, competent, but non-threatening. I'm not asking for some dramatic, dark backstory, but the way the writers treat Rumi just started to feel a little rude after a while. Ando's little brother living back home with his family has more episodes revolving around him than the girl Ichigo lives with. And then in season two, we meet back up with her and find she's part of the new A group, that she's been inspired by Ichigo's success and worked hard to improve her own skills while she was away. A really promising start. And then we never hear from her again, except for one tiny scene in the last episode where she shows up to hand out flyers for Ichigo's new shop. The disrespect for this character. That's all I've got to say. I also would have been happy to see Yoko make a comeback in season two. She was by far the most interesting side character in the first season. Harsh and cynical, but there was something sympathetic about her, too. First, we see her hanging out with the girls bullying Ichigo, and then with a rival team. Yoko did all the dirty work for them, sneaking around, stealing ideas, messing with their opponents' ovens sometimes. Actual cheating, whereas Lemon just tested the bounds of morality. When confronted, she tells Ichigo flat out that a business can't run on dreams alone, that in the real world you need money and connections, and she's just doing whatever she has to to get close to the people who have them. And maybe she came across as sympathetic to me just because she always looked so… sad. Yoko's that girl who's never really a part of the groups she's with. They don't treat her particularly well, and even if she is using them in return, that makes her vulnerable to someone like Ichigo, who can't hold grudges and can't stand to see anyone suffering. Yoko was a great character, but after she bonds with Ichigo and learns some life lessons, she's another one who fades into the background, never to be heard from again. And this may come as a surprise to anyone who's familiar with the series, but I wouldn't have minded if the heiress became our last main character, provided that promotion came with a healthy dose of character development. Mia Koshiro, commonly known as simply the heiress, is the daughter of the owner of Chateau Seika, possibly the wealthiest, most influential sweets corporation in the world. Spoiled doesn't even begin to cover it, She's grown up confident in the knowledge that anything and everything she could ever want is just a phone call away. She's obsessed with Kashino, and keeps challenging him to competitions where he has to marry her if he loses. You want to talk about annoying characters? Mia takes the cake. But she was an annoying character who had a lot of potential. By the end of season one, and increasingly so in season two, where she does still get a ton of screen time, the thing that really annoyed me about her is that she doesn't get to grow at all, because there was a lot of opportunity for growth. Constantly using her father's money and connections does come back to bite her every once in a while. High quality can't always overpower a thoughtful, personal touch. But she never really seems to learn anything from her setbacks. She takes it hard when she loses to Mari's team in the tournament, and there's an episode dedicated to Mia getting her own sweet spirit partner, who I thought was going to teach her some life lessons about working hard for your own success. But they take the opposite approach, and the spirit turns into a mini-clone of Mia instead. I hate to see wasted potential like that. I would have loved to have her along if the writers had been willing to put in a little more effort. 
But what we got was Lemon, who seems to have lost what personality she did have back in Season 1. On more than one occasion, I found myself thinking, you could take Lemon out of this scene completely and it would change literally nothing. And unfortunately, that kind of sums up her role in this whole season. Trying to describe this season is interesting, because certain things are exactly the same, and that wasn't always a good thing, but others were very different. The pacing felt the same, which is a little unfortunate, because what works for a season with 50 episodes doesn't really work for one with just 13. The side plots often felt like distractions this time around. I liked catching up with Mari, but I would have cut out the three episodes spent in the Sweets Kingdom. Frankly, that time could have been used to explore characters who were more important. I can't say the tone of the show is different exactly, but it does have a slightly more grown-up feel. That, too, is not necessarily a good thing. Gone are a lot of the more whimsical sentiments. It really does feel like a necessary reminder whenever one of the characters has that revelation. Oh yeah, I got into making sweets in the first place because I wanted to make people happy. Season 2 focuses a lot more on the practical, running a business side of things. I'm just saying, there's a reason a lot of anime don't bring their characters past their high school graduation. Real life consequences can be kind of a buzzkill. The romance was fine, actually kind of non-existent outside of the moments Ichigo and Kashino are getting pulled around by rival love interests. They're friendly enough now, they just don't really have many sweet moments building up to it before they're suddenly together at the end. It definitely didn't have the focus I thought it would. I feel like this review has been nothing but critiques, and I really don't mean to imply that it was bad overall. Ichigo's the same lovable protagonist we got to know in the first season, and I enjoyed watching her supporting her friends, inspiring them at times, and overcoming every challenge that came her way. I do think this season was weaker than the first, but not in the sense that I'd suggest skipping it. I'd think anyone who spent 50 episodes with these characters would want to know where they go next. And while I may not be surprised it didn't get a third season, season two was a worthwhile continuation. Thank you, one last time, Sassy Simone Smith, for originally recommending this series. And thank you for watching.